everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to Mystical Munchies, featuring the Cooking for Wizards, Warriors, and Dragons cookbook. I wasn't completely impressed by the baked pears with gorgonzola and candied walnuts last week, so now we're going to try our luck with the entree, poached fish with white wine sauce and fennel. First up, let's tell the story. One of the most powerful themes in Kushiel's Chosen the second book in the original Kushiel's Legacy Trilogy is the emergence of the gods and their very real presence in shaping events. Phaedra faces certain death in the Serenissima Sea, too far away from the gods of Terre d'Ange to, to hear her. And so, she makes a pledge to Asherat of the Sea to save her life. In exchange, she vows to clean Asherat's temple of those, like Melisande, who manipulate worship to their own ends. Asherat answers by delivering Phaedra from the sea and into the detainment of the Illyrian pirate Kazan, whose sailors are convinced she is an ill-luck villa, and whom Kazan treats as a potential spy and hostage. Before they come to an agreement over their relationship and Kazan's willingness to help, they first share a supper of poached fish and bread. Well, we're going to see what I think of the fish at least, because the ingredients are waiting for us at the table, so let's head in that direction. For this recipe, we're going to need three tablespoons of butter, divided, a pound of fennel bulb, which I've got cut up all right here already, quarter teaspoon of thyme, they say fresh thyme leaves, but I'm going to use from this, the spice section in the grocery store, half a cup of dry white wine, I'm using a Pinot Grigio, or Grigio is probably how it's pronounced, four cod fillets, which I've got right here, half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper, Juice and zest of a lemon. A lemon. I've zested a lemon, but I'm going to use prepackaged juice, lemon juice, and a teaspoon of chopped parsley. Once again, I'm using from the spice rack. No pressure for this to turn out well, but this is supposed to be dinner tonight. So let's move into the kitchen and start putting recipe to putting this recipe together. We've got a large skillet with the lid, and I'm hoping this is going to be big enough. We're going to start off by melting two tablespoons of the butter over medium-low heat. So we're going to put the butter in, and I think I want this to be at about a... I think we're going to go to about a four with that. I'm going to go grab my drink as well while that melts. While we're waiting for the butter to melt, in case you haven't seen the post on Facebook by now, I'm not going to be making a tri video on triple play baseball. I talked about that in the after G.I. Joe the deck building game was over. I started playing triple play baseball and I just I discovered that I couldn't stand it really. It wasn't flowing all that well for me. Some of that's due to my own inexperience with the game. Um whoop. let's turn the right burner on, Phoenix. Anyway. As I was saying, some of, the, some of the problems I was having with triple play baseball are down to my own inexperience with the game, but I think even with more experience, I can see how the flow would end up being a bit of a problem with this one. So I'm just going to drop it out of the rotation. We, sw we are still going to be playing inside pitch on Sunday, because I'm, I feel like I've got the flow of that one down pretty well. So we'll, that'll bring us back to... That'll be enough on the baseball front. We'll come back to Mystical Munchies now as we watch the butter start to melt. It's going to be a bit slow, but again, you guys know my philosophy on Mystical Munchies. I'd rather do stuff slowly and in real time so there's less of a chance of the recipe being a botch than try to get cute with it and run into trouble. So that's how we're going to handle this. Okay. Spread that around a bit. Thank you. 
Okay. Butter is melting nicely for us, thankfully. Butter is just about melted, so once we get to that point, we'll be adding in the fennel and the thyme. I'm not going to shoot a video, I'm not going to show how I prepared the fennel for use, but that's easy enough to find on YouTube. But it is all cut up and ready to go for us. It's got an interesting scent to it. I'm not sure how fragrant it's going to end up being once it gets cooked. We're going to find out, though, that's for sure. Just bookmarking next week's recipe so I have that ready to go in case you're wondering what the page turning you were hearing in the background was. Looks like the butter is probably melted enough that we can add the fennel and the thyme in. So we want. What do we want? A quarter. We want a quarter teaspoon of thyme, but we'll add the fennel in as well. Fennel, and here's the quarter teaspoon of thyme. We're going to cook that until the fennel is soft. fennel's cooking and we want to cook, wait, let that cook until it's soft while we stir it occasionally, we're actually going to move over to the counter real quick for a nice little one-off bonus segment that I like to call, Does Phoenix Remember How to Use a Corkscrew? Let's find out. So our first order of business is going to be peeling the wrapping off of here. Fortunately, I've got a waiter's corkscrew right here, which does have a knife attachment on it, so I can get get at the wrapping here. Which I should be able to just tear that loose. And yep, good thing I went digging for good thing I went digging for my corkscrew. And I've got a stopper. I got a stopper for the wine as well, so that'll be very handy. But now for the moment of truth, let's see if Phoenix remembers how to use his corkscrew. We want to put that out in the middle. Screw that down. Oop. I think I went a little too far. Let's pull out just a touch. There we are. That should work. That's probably not where I want to go with it. That is not good.
So I'll have to make a second pass at the cork, clearly. But I do at least seem to have the basic idea down. There we go. Took me a little bit longer than I would have liked. It didn't help that the corkscrew actually, that the cork actually kind of split in half on me inside the wine bottle, but it doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like we had any residue in there, so we're all good to go there. I can throw the stopper on, and we'll move back over to the stove, where we'll check on the fennel. Okay, it's definitely getting a little bit more fragrant, and I, I'm even smelling that through a little bit of the head cold I've got. I did have a bit of a head cold while I was working on G.I. Joe the deck building game but it, on Wednesday, but it didn't seem like it was causing me any major problems. So we're not going to worry too much about that at this point. Okay. Still seems pretty hard, but we're going to grab a fork to check for fork tenderness. Yeah, there's definitely not fork tender yet. Fork tender probably isn't the, isn't the threshold they're going for here, but I figure it'll serve as a good point for the, where it's ready for the next step. Which the next step will be adding the wine, as you can probably guess. In the meantime, while that actually cooks, we are going to move over to the counter full time for the next shot. We can at least keep the fennel in time and shot while, and keep an eye on that while we work with the fish. Because next we are going to take the cod. I'm going to find... There's a way to... I'm going to find my scissors because that'll be the easiest way to cut this loose. And then we'll cut on the inside there. Okay, I'm actually going to grab a. I'm actually going to grab a proper plate rather than a paper plate. I'm probably going to need a couple of plates for this. I don't think I was expecting the cod to be quite that big. So I'm going to grab a couple of plates. Actually, I'm going to take my ring off as well. So now that we've got the fish out, now we're going to season it with the salt, pepper, and lemon zest. Easy does it. We'll spread it around a bit. Same thing up here. Go back up. There's a pepper. Actually, we can probably turn it over and season the other side as well a bit. Mm -hmm. 
does it. Check on the fennel real quick. Check on that for pork tenderness as well. It is definitely still not pork tender yet. And we'll season this up with a lemon zest. over and season the other side as well. So the fish can move away until we're ready for that. We'll actually move back over to the stove here. I'll bring the fish back toward the table until I'm ready for it. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. It does not seem like the doesn't seem like the fennel is really softening for us. Certainly not to like a fork tender point, but now full disclosure, I've actually never had fennel before in my life, so this is going to be an interesting experience. I have had plenty of fish di fish recipes, and we've made a few of them here on Mystical Munchies as well. So. Seems like we're starting to get in there a little bit. So actually, it's definitely starting to, the fennel's definitely starting to soften. So we might actually be ready to bring the wine in. Yeah, I think, I think we're probably ready to bring the wine in now that I'm starting to actually be able to poke now that I'm actually able to poke the fork in, I think we're ready to bring in the half a cup of wine. So we've got our, once again, we've got our Pinot Grigio right here. Pour out half a cup of that. And 
then that can hit the fridge. Okay, we'll let that cook for about another two or three minutes. Actually, I'm going to set a timer for that. Let's set a three minute timer for that. We'll let that cook for another three minutes. bring fish back over because we'll be looking for that once the timer goes off. Play out for serving. Timer is going to be going off here shortly. Okay, now that the timer has gone off, now we're going to add the fish, the, the already seasoned fish, into the skillet. Hopefully, this will all fit. That should fit. Okay, very good. We'll put some of the lemon zest back on there. All right, wash my hands real quick. Okay, now that we've got the fish in there, we're going to put the lid on the skillet. Hopefully it'll still fit. Hey, look at that. Perfect. Then we're going to let that cook for 10 to 14 minutes. I'm going to set a timer here on my watch for 14 minutes. Or until the internal temperature of the fish reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit, 63 Celsius. So while we're waiting for the fish to cook, I actually just got a delivery in earlier this, this afternoon. So rather than sit idle, what say we adjourn to the game room to unbox that real quick? As I was perusing Noble Knight on when Noble Knight's website on Wednesday, I actually noticed something interesting on the website. So I decided to grab it. So that's what this delivery is. I just got it in today. So let's crack this open and see what we've got in here. 
Another nice and small box. I think we're greeted by plastic wrap, which can hit the bin. 10% off my first trade, which can also hit the bin. I can close the knife. And we're greeted by a Ziploc bag full of the 1992-93 season for Appa Hockey. Let's take a quick look at this, if I can ever get the bag open. Take a look at how the cards looked back then. Okay, looks pretty straightforward. I happened to grab Philadelphia, so these are the Flyers. Mark Recchi coming into the league. Rod Brindamore, Lindros. Very different back for the Appa hockey cards, but cool. So I know I've got that season now that I can add to my Appa repertoire. Let's just pick another random team here. This is Vancouver. Kirk McLean. Pavel Bure. Trevor Linden. I'm trying to remember who the goalie for Vancouver was. Oh, I think it was Kirk McLean, actually. All right, cool. So we can add that, like I said, we can add that season to my app hockey repertoire as well. With that, by the time we turn the camera back on, we'll be back in the kitchen. Fish has been turned off, it's off the heat as well. So now I'm going to remove the remove the fish to my plate. Well, to a plate, I should say. Whoa, and it's falling apart on me. Alright, so now that we've got that done, now we're going to add the now we're going to add the last of the butter to the sauce. Which I put the oh I brought that out already. So we're going to whisk that in. I was just looking at if the fennel is edible and it turns out that it is apparently not edible. Well, technically it is edible, but the it's supposed to be too tough for most people to eat, so I'm not going to try it. We'll see how it flavors, though. So I think the way we're going to do that is we're also going to add in the lemon juice. That's probably too much. Whisk that in. See if I can pour the sauce without getting any of the fennel out as well. I should be able to do that. We'll move over to the counter because I'd rather not try to pour this over the stove. Oops, we got some of the fennel out, but oh well. Okay. I think we're all good there. So now I'm going to dump the fennel in the garbage and then we're going to move over to my desk for the taste test. Any good chef comes prepared with an oh crap button in case this doesn't turn out and I'm no exception. I've got my oh crap button all ready to go. This is supposed to be dinner so let's find out how this turns out and if I'm going to be eating on this tonight or if I'm going to be having something else. Fish is definitely falling apart, but it also spent like 15 minutes in the heat. So let's see what I think. Actually, I'm going to try another piece here real quick. That one had a little bone in it, but fish bones usually are pretty small, so... 
Not too bad. It's actually pretty good. It's not really, I would say it's not my favorite fish recipe, but I will never say no to a good recipe of fish. The lemon flavor is definitely there, but it's not going to overpower you. I didn't really, I didn't really know what to expect as far as the taste of fennel is concerned, so I couldn't really weigh in on that. There was enough of a variety of spices to really notice everything, so I'd say this is another recipe that turned out pretty well, and that's another episode of Mystical Munchies in the books. Next week for Mystical Munchies, we'll be making the dessert, Runaway Fruit Tarts. As for the game videos, Sunday we'll be playing Inside Pitch Baseball, and Wednesday next week, what are we playing Wednesday? We're playing Marvel Champions. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.